Hi, and welcome to this episode of Dwiggy's Demos. Today we're going to show you how to play a brand new game called Elysium. This is a game published by Space Cowboys and Asmodee. It's designed by Brett Gilbert and Matthew Dunstan. It is an excellent game. It's uh, hot off the presses, literally. Um, a friend of mine who uh, runs the uh, channel Dad v Daughter Playthroughs um, got an advanced copy from Asmodee and he loaned me his copy so that I can do a Dwiggy's demos to show you the gameplay to really help you understand the rules and, and the experience of playing the game. So this is Elysium. I'm really excited to show you this game. And uh, let's start off by giving you a brief overview of how you play the game and, and what the object of the game is. So as the rule book says, and uh, let me point out that this is an excellent rule book. It has um, really good um, graphics in it, really good artwork, beautiful artwork actually. You can see here on the cover, um, and it's really well illustrated throughout um, with great detail and uh, explanation of all the icons here on the back. It's got a great reference. Um, this is an excellent rule book. I, I learned how to play the game just by reading through the rule book really one time. Um, but. Uh, I don't want you to have to read through this, so I'm going to try to give you a, an overview and give you the rules, the, the stuff you need to know, so you don't have to read through the rules if you don't like to do that. Um, but the description of the game in the rulebook is excellent. It says, you take on the role of an ambitious demigod who is trying to claim a place at the summit of Mount Olympus. You recruit heroes, you acquire artifacts, and you undertake heroic quests to forge your own legends. During the five epochs of the game, or rounds, uh, you'll build powerful card combinations and then you'll destroy them as the cards must be transferred to your Elysium to earn you victory points. So this is all a game about cards. You're collecting cards. Um, you're taking them from this central area called the Agora. There's going to be a, basically a pool of cards out here, kind of an offer, where you're going to be drafting cards one at a time. Um, you and your opponents will take turns drafting cards. And as you take those cards, you add them to your domain. And then you're, you're trying to build combos of cards that work together, like cards from the same god. So this game has eight different gods represented, and you're going to be collecting cards that work well together. And then at some point, you need to transfer those cards from your domain into your Elysium down here below. So the top part of your player board is your domain, where cards are in active and in play, and you can use their abilities. And then once you transfer them to your Elysium, they are basically dead. They've gone to Elysium, which is, you know, the Elysium Fields, and uh, those cards then become part of Legends, and those Legends give you points at the end of the game. So you're gaining points and victory points during the course of the game um, as cards are in play, and then you transfer them to Elysium to score them again at the end of the game as part of a Legend. So that's generally the idea of the game. You're trying to collect cards, and transfer them to your Elysium and maximize your victory points by using the cards to the best of their ability. There are some cards that have cards that uh, have abilities uh, as soon as you bring them into play. For example, um, cards that have this little lightning bolt symbol on them, like this. Uh, the little lightning bolt here in the left side. That is an instant effect that happens as soon as you take that card. And when you take that card, you receive three gold and then all other players receive one gold. There's a lot of cards like this that give you a benefit and give other players a benefit just to a lesser degree. Um, so cards like this are going to have an instant effect, but uh, once that effect has happened, that card is really useless to you. It doesn't do anything for you just sitting out there. So then that might be a card that you're going to transfer from your domain to your Elysium on the very next turn so that you can get it down here and start writing a legend. That's the uh, term that they use to um, create sets. What you're doing um, when you write a legend, is you're trying to create sets. And there's two different kinds of sets. There's sets based on the level of the card. So there's level three cards. There's level two cards. And there are level one cards. So there's three different levels of cards. And you can create level legends. And a level legend is basically just a set of cards that is all of the same level. 
So this would be a level 3 legend, and I've got only level 3 cards in that legend. And this would be a level 2 legend with only level 2 cards in it. And then obviously a level 1 legend would only have level 1 cards in it. And so you're collecting sets of cards, and so when you transfer cards from your domain down here into your Elysium, you want to transfer cards that, are, that will help you build a set. So I would transfer a level 2 card down into Elysium and add it to this group here, and now I have a legend, a level 2 legend, and so I've got some level 2 cards down there. And in the same way, you might transfer level 3 cards down into Elysium to build a level 3 legend. There are also families. As I mentioned before, you are playing with all these different um, families of gods. So you have Poseidon, which is this, this blue, um, blue cards like this. And you have Athena, which is uh, symbolized by the owl in the upper left corner. That's the symbol up there, the uh, god family symbol. And so the other kind of legend you can write is a family legend. And again, there are only three levels of cards, so to create a family legend, you're trying to collect all three levels of cards for that family. So, for example, this would be a complete family legend for Poseidon, for the Poseidon family. So I have a level one card, a level two card, and a level three card. And if I transferred all three of those cards into my Elysium, I would have a complete set, a complete legend, in that family, and that would be worth a, a certain amount of victory points at the end of the game. Um, these complete legends are worth the most points. In addition, whenever you complete a family legend, you get a bonus chip, and there's two different bonus chips for each family. A five-point bonus chip, five victory points, that's the symbol for victory points, and there's a two-point victory point chip. So um, the first person that completes a legend for that family gets the five-point chip, and the second person gets the two-point chip. So um, being the first person to complete a legend of each type is beneficial because you get extra, you get bonus points for that. So there's a bit of a race between you and your opponents to try to complete your legends first. So there's that, def there's that balance, there's that interplay, there's, that, um, there's decision points of when do I move my cards down into Elysium? Do I do it early so I can get my bonuses early? Or do I wait so that I can get more benefit out of the cards as they stay in my domain and give me their overarching effects and they combo with other cards? Um, so that's how it works. And also the same thing with the level legends. Um, once you build, whoever has the biggest um, legend of a certain level gets a victory point chip, a bonus chip for that level. So for example, I have two cards of level three. My opponent has no legends of level three. So once I get my second card of, of level three, I would get this bonus chip and that's worth nine victory points at the end of the game. However, the first player that exceeds that number of cards in a legend, they get to take this from me and add it to their victory point total. So you're kind of battling for the largest legend in each level as well. So that's the, the point of the game, uh, to make the most of your cards, take cards and uh, transfer them into your Elysium and get victory points. You're saving your victory points here on your, on your board and at the end of the game, you're adding up the victory points you've accumulated plus the value of all your legends and the value of any cards that might have end of the game value and then whoever has the most victor point is the winner. So that's how you play the game. Now let me go through the rules and the mechanics of the game and show you how it's played. So now let's go through the rules and talk about the mechanics of the game and show you how it's played. So the game is played over a uh, as I mentioned earlier, epochs. And uh, you play over five epochs or rounds, and you keep track of the rounds here. And each round is made up of, of four different phases. Um, there's basically a setup phase, there's an action phase or an auction phase where you're drafting cards, then there's a uh, legend phase where you're moving your cards from your domain into your uh, legend, into your Elysium, and then finally there's a cleanup phase where you kind of reset everything. So, let's walk through those phases one at a time. Phase one is called the Awakening, and that's when you populate the draft area and get the, the, the pool ready for play. So what you do is you take cards off of the deck and you deal out cards into the Agora, which you take three times the number of players plus one extra card. So there's going to be three cards per player plus one extra. So in a two-player game like this, there'd be seven cards and we just deal them off the top. And we go like this, one, two, and it doesn't really matter where you place them because they're going to be drafted from this area here. So you can just place them in whatever 
configuration makes most sense to you, maybe aesthetically most pleasing. Um, this is best for us. This is how we like to lay it out. Um, so you can see that there's seven cards out there, so we're ready to begin. So that's the awakening phase. Um, if there were other cards in that area from the last, the last epoch, you would clear those out also during the awakening phase. So you're basically resetting the agora during the, the awakening phase. You clear out old cards, you deal out new ones. Also, if you were playing with Apollo, if the, if the god Apollo was uh, part of one of the, the gods here, that one of the families that you were playing with, you would also take cards from the oracle. Um, and let me show you what that looks like here. You have this extra little board that you would place, that you would place above this area here. So you'd have to kind of push everything up a little bit. I don't know if you can see that on the camera there. Hopefully you can see. Yeah, you can kind of see here. So you would add this extra space here. This is the oracle kind of like the Oracle of Apollo, um, which from Greek mythology. And you would add this extra space in here. Um, it's a little bit small here, but you'd add this extra space. And during the awakening phase, you're going to take four cards and add them here to the um, Oracle area. Um, and that is basically cards that were going to come into play during the next epoch. So it's a way for you to see some cards that are going to come into play during the next round. So you can sort of plan ahead. You can use the Oracle to see into the future and you can see cards that are going to come out. So these four cards would just sit here during the whole round and then at the beginning of the next round, during the next epoch, uh, during the awakening phase, you take those four cards, you slide them down and then you add additional cards to fill out the, the Agora. So you've got four cards that came down from the Oracle and they've helped to do that for you. Okay, so I cleaned up that uh, I cleaned up the Oracle area just to get you back to the basic setup again. Um, so that's why that magical little blip happened there. So that's the awakening phase. Um, that's the setup, and you get the offer ready. The next phase is the action phase, or like what I like to call the drafting phase. This is when you're this is when you take the cards and you add them to your board. So the first player, which is going to be my son over there, gets to go first. Um, whoever has the the number one. Um, of these little circles over here. That's, that signifies that they're the first player. And you can see that these are modular. They fit into your player board because these are going to change over the course of the game. Each epoch or each round, um, based on who's, which quest you take, you're going to get a different player number for the next round. So that's going to be constantly shifting. So during the action phase, the first player gets first choice of the cards available. And the cards are really important to look at here. Um, you can see this part right in the upper right corner shows you the acquisition conditions that you must meet in order to acquire or in order to take that card, in order to draft it. Um, so this card right here is a really good example because it has a blue symbol and it also has a black dot. So that blue symbol matches these columns down here. Each one of these columns is, has a color and it also has a symbol on the top. And you can see that that symbol matches that card right there. So I have a blue column in my player area here on my board and the, the black dot signifies just a wild. So you need one other column of any color. So if you meet these conditions, you have those columns available on your board, then you can take this card. Okay, that's how that works. Um, you can see similarly, this card over here has a green dot and a black dot. So that means that I must have a green column and another column available. So I must have a green plus one other column in my area to take this card. And you'll see the other cards have a yellow dot or a red dot or a blue dot. So in order to take those cards, I have to have that, those columns available on my board. So I check the acquisition condition and let's just say I want this card. I take this card, I have blue and black or blue and any other color. So I add it to my board and then I, can, I have to take and discard or set aside one of my columns. And it does not have to match the, card, the, the columns I used to, to acquire the card. You're not really spending to acquire a card. It's just basically a way to signify that you've taken one turn. However, the, the column that you take is not, a, the, you set aside is no longer available for this epoch to take future cards. So you need to strategically choose that, that column that you set aside and make sure it's not one that you need in the future. For example, if there's only one green card left here that requires green. So if I wanted to take this card, because it's a level three card, level three cards are usually more powerful. 
I want to save my green column, so I'm not going to set aside green. And maybe I maybe I don't care about this red card, so I'm just going to say, okay, I, I take this card, I meet the conditions, and now I'm going to set aside a column, I set aside my red, and now I don't have that red column available for the next round of, of drafting, for the, my next turn. So uh, my opponent takes a card, I take a card, and then he takes a card, again, he gets rid of a column, and then it's back to me. So now I get a choice again, and let's just say I take this green card. I still have a green column, and I still have one other column available, so I can take this one. So I draft that card, and I set aside, hmm, now it becomes more difficult because there's blue cards and yellow cards out there. Now, again, obviously my, my opponent would have already taken some cards, but um, I'll just set aside blue because I don't need those blue cards. And then, again, it goes back and forth. And we keep drafting like this until these two conditions are met. So you're drafting two different things during this action phase. You're drafting cards, and you're also drafting quests. Now, in this case, you can see that there's only two quests available. Um, in a three-player game, you'd obviously have three, and a four-player game, you'd have four quests. So um, in, in, uh, you, and in each epoch, you must draft three cards and one quest. And you can do it in any order that you like. And it really depends on the game state and the situation, what cards are available, what you do in what order. It also depends on what columns you have available. So you really have to plan as much as you can your entire epoch, your entire draft, once you see what's out there, you kind of have to strategically decide. I'm going to use my blue first, and then I'm going to use green, and you have to kind of decide what your opponent wants as well. Um, so it's really important to kind of watch whatever what your opponents are doing. So right now, as you can see, I set aside my blue and my red. I have to take a quest before the end of this epoch. I've taken two cards. I can take. I have to take one more card and one quest. Well, the only quest that I can take is you can see these little symbols also apply to the quests. So these two symbols are above this quest, which means this. in order to take this quest, I have to have either a yellow or a green column available. To take this quest, I need blue or red. Well, I already used my blue and my red. I set them aside. So now I can only take this quest over here. So it's my turn. I'm going to take something, and I'm definitely going to take a quest because I need a quest. And I don't really need one of those cards. I don't, I don't care which one of those I get as my last card. So I take that quest. Now my opponent takes a card. And then my last turn, I have to take another card. So I can't take these because these require blue. Can't take this because it requires red. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot when you take a quest, you also have to set aside a column to signify that you've taken a turn. So I would have set aside my green because I need yellow to take a card. So I'm going to use my last action. I'm going to take this card here and I'm going to set aside my yellow column. So you can see now I've got a complete, uh, a com I've completed the round. I've taken three cards, and I've taken one quest, and that's the end of the action phase. Let me back up just for one second. I forgot to mention a really important part of the game. Um, when you're drafting, again, you're required to draft three cards and one quest. Well, let's just say we're in this situation here, and uh, let's just say, this is a perfect example here, let's just say I only have my green column left and I need to take one more card. I've already taken my quest, I've taken two cards, I need one more. There are no legal cards for me to take that are available out here. All of these require yellow, red, or yellow columns, and I only have green. So in this case, if I need to take an extra card, and I cannot, then I must take a citizen. Taking a citizen is as simple as taking a card off the top of the deck and, and taking it face down and placing it in your domain. Now I've got this kind of basic, kind of grayish back card, and that represents a citizen. They, they're not special, they're not a god, they're not some special artifact that's related to a family. They're just a vanilla citizen. But they're actually not all that vanilla. Citizens are wild cards, and they can be used down in your Elysium to fill in spots where you need uh, another card and you don't have a, an exact match in your domain. So for example, at the end of the game, if I wanted to add another level three card and I didn't have one, I can use a citizen. He becomes a wild card and I can, he takes the place of another card and is a substitute for that card. And in the, in, for the purposes of scoring at the end of the game, he counts as if he is exactly that card filling that spot. So he, in this case, he's a level three card. And so if I was scoring this 
here at the end of the game, I would get points for a three card, um, a three card legend, a level three legend that's three cards. Um, however, every citizen that you have in your Elysium at the end of the game is worth negative two victory points. So you lose victory points. They help you complete sets and they give you extra bonus points for completing sets, but you also take a penalty for each citizen that you use in that way. So citizens are uh, required to be taken if you cannot take if you cannot take legally take another card. Um, you can't choose this to take a citizen if you can take another card, but if you cannot take another card legally, then you must take a citizen. And this is actually a strategic thing because there are times, especially towards the end of the game, where you want to complete your legends, where you might work it out so that you you mess yourselves up, quote unquote, and you don't leave the correct columns so that you can take a card and then you're forced to take a citizen, which can actually be beneficial to you. So um, that's what happens when you can't legally take a citizen. Now let's talk about quests. Let's just say that my opponent um, has taken this level one quest over here and I've taken my three cards and now it's time I've drafted three cards in this round, in this epoch, and now I need to take a quest. Well, this quest requires a, either a blue or a red column. I don't have a blue or red column, I only have green. So in this case, I would be forced to take this quest here, but I would flip it over to the uncompleted side. And now instead of getting the benefits of the completed quest, which is a gold and three transfers, I'm only going to get one gold and one transfer. And it's going to give me a, a negative effect here. Um, when we determine player order, I actually get the very last player order. So I follow the kind of the bottom of the rank. So that's a really bad thing. So you have to kind of plan carefully um, to make sure that you take quests and you leave columns so that you can take a quest legally. As If you cannot legally take a quest, then you're forced to take an uncompleted quest, which is kind of a big penalty. Um, you, you get very little benefit and you fall to the very end of player order. Um, the other part of the action phase, why it's called the action phase, it is the primary time when you can take actions that are on the cards in your domain. Um, so let me walk through the different kinds of actions that you might see. One of the types of actions is an instantaneous action. This card here has a little lightning bolt and when you take this card it triggers immediately. It is an instantaneous effect. So as soon as you take it, whatever effect is on there happens. And in this case, this card says you may transfer one card and then all other players may do the same for one extra gold. So that little symbol there is a transfer symbol. So when you take this card, you get the ability to transfer a card from your domain into your Elysium. So that's what that instantaneous effect means. Any card that has that little symbol on there has a, an effect that triggers immediately. And it triggers only one time. So it's sometimes it's going to be a transfer, sometimes it's going to be gold or victory points. It just varies depending on the card. So when I take that card, I get an instant effect. The other type of card that you might get, and uh, let me show you this one here. This is a, an activated effect. This effect um, the, the effect that happens down here in this part of the card, that's the effect of the card. That effect only happens when you activate the card. And in this game, you turn the card sideways to signify that you've activated it. Similar to many other games where you have to activate a card. You turn it sideways to signify that you've used it, like this. I would take this card and activate it. And if I did that, the effect would trigger. And in this case, I would receive one victory point for each set of two Zeus cards in my domain. So one victory point per two Zeus and it shows in my domain which is it shows up my player board it shows above and it has the Zeus family symbol so if I activated this card and used the effect I would get in this case I would get one victory point because I have three cards rounded down one victory point so activated effects are another kind of thing uh, another kind of effect and you can use those effects only on your turn so only when it's your turn to take an action can you use an activated effect. Another kind of effect that has to be triggered or used are triggered effects. I've got this little circle here because this is an example of a triggered effect. 
this effect has that little circle and it aligns with this little circular token here. When you take a card that has a triggered effect or that trigger symbol, you take this little trigger and you set it on the card to remind yourself because it's a one-time use effect. You're going to be able to use this card one time and when you use it, you take the effect here. And in this case, it says all other players discard all the citizens in their domain. I'll, I'll talk about citizens in a moment here. Um, because I, I kind of skipped over that part, so we'll get back to that in a moment. Um, all other players discard the citizens in our domain. So when I, when my one of my opponents or when multiple players have multiple citizens in their domains, I could trigger this card. I take the little ring off it. I set it aside over there, and now the effect happens, and all the other players lose the citizens in their domain. So that's one of those situations where you want to look at the timing and decide when's the most advantageous time to take that effect. Um, the last kind of effect that you might use is an elusis effect. It's this goofy little snake here, and it has a little activate symbol next to it. So it's an activated effect. You have to kind of turn it sideways to use it, and it's a one-time use uh, only once per round. Um, but this elusis um, card, any cards that have the elusis symbol on them, can only be used if you have another elusis card in your domain. So um, you have to kind of use these in pairs. Um, or at least collect them in pairs. So if I have one right now, I can't use that effect. It's just worthless to me. So I need to find another card with this symbol on it, the elusive symbol. And once I have that second card, now I can use those cards. They kind of work together. They don't necessarily do the same thing, but they just activate each other. They power each other up. It's kind of like a wonder twin kind of situation. So um, that, those are the elusive effects, just like activated effects. You turn the card sideways to show that you've used it. And then at the end of the epoch, when you do the reset, you turn those cards back um, straight up and you'd be able to use it again for the next round. Let's uh, show you what happens in the next phase. So we've shown you the action phase. Um, I've shown you all the actions on the cards that happen that can be used during the actions phase. So now let's take you to the writing the legends phase. This is the third phase. And this is where you take cards and you transfer them from your domain into Elysium. So, uh, the very first thing that happens during writing the legends is you distribute these little tokens to, dis to uh, determine player order. And you, you distribute them based on the number, the disc number, that is on your quest. So whatever quest that you took during the actions phase, you take the appropriate um, disc and you distribute it around the table. So in this case, nothing would change. I already was player two. I took the, the number two quest, so I keep this. Uh, I keep, I'm player two and Nick will be player one. So then the second thing you do is you get paid for your quest. So you get the rewards of your quest. And the, the two quests are identical um, every round, that, or all the quests, they don't really change. Um, so the number one quest over there is worth um, five coins and two transfers. And I get three coins and three transfers. I'll explain those transfers in just a moment because that happens next. So you get paid out for your quests. So I would get three coins, one, two, three, add it to my player board. Um, my opponent takes five coins. And now once we've paid out for our quests and received the rewards for our quest, then we can transfer cards. We can transfer our cards from our domain to our Elysium. As I mentioned earlier, this is how you accumulate points for the end of the game. This is when you, this is how you build your sets. So you can only transfer cards um, up to uh, the number of transfers that you have available. Um, generally, you only have the transfers that are available that you got on your quest. However, there are some cards that will give you extra transfers depending on different families. Um, I believe, uh, I believe Athena gives you extra transfers. Um, so that's an example. Um, so for each transfer that you have, and in this case I have three transfers available, I can transfer a card. So I might, in this case, on my turn, when it's my turn, you take, um, sorry, then, so when you begin the transfer part of the phase, you take turns and you do this in player order. So player one gets to do all their transfers first, and then player two gets to do all of their transfers. So they can do as many transfers as they want, up to the number of transfers they have available. And then the second player takes their transfer. So I have three transfers available for my quest and no other transfers here. So I could transfer this card. And every transfer card that you transfer, you must pay the cost to transfer that card. So, and, and the cost is equal to the level of the card. So in this case, I would spend three coins to transfer that card. I'd return those three to the bank. 
and I want to transfer this card and it's going to cost me three as well and so I take my three coins and I transfer that to the bank and now um, I only have one coin available so I really can't transfer a lot of cards and all I have is a citizen left um, so let me talk to you about this before I forget so when you transfer cards down to your Elysium you have to make a decision you decide does that card um, get added to a level legend or does it get added to a family legend uh, a level legend can only have one card from each family and all the cards are of the same level so um, as you can tell there's as we mentioned earlier there's five different families in play at any one time uh, out of eight there's eight total families available and there's only five in play in each game so um, the the most number of cards you can have in a level legend is five one from each family so um, when you transfer a card to Elysium you have to decide do I want to build a level legend and start accumulating a set of threes uh, of matching level or do I want to start building a family legend that has only cards of that family and a family legend only has three cards total at the, at the most a level one a level two and a level three card so in this case I might say you know what I'm gonna start this is early in the game I'm gonna try to do two family legends so I'm gonna start a Poseidon family legend and a Zeus family legend and so I've transferred these two and as my last card I'm gonna transfer this card this citizen down because I have a transfer available I might as well use it I have a coin available so I'm gonna transfer the citizen and when you transfer a citizen it can be added to any legend you want and wherever wherever you add it whatever card you're using to replace um, with that citizen that's the cost to transfer it so let's just say I decided to make him part of the the um, Zeus family legend I decided to make him a level one card to um, take the place of a level one card in this legend and now I, I spend one coin because he it's a level one card he becomes a level one card he costs one to transfer I pay that to the bank and now I've used my three transfers so that's how the writing of the legends works each player takes their turns um, transferring their cards into their Elysium, spending their transfers that they earned from their quests, and any other transfers they may have earned from other places, and they build their Elysium. The final phase is actually fairly simple. Um, during that final phase, it's, um, it's basically called the end of the epoch, which is basically the reset phase. So during that reset phase, you take all of your columns and you put them back on your player board, you take all of the quests and you place them back at their appropriate places in the, uh, on, the, on the quest board. You take, um, you take the epoch marker and you move it up one level. And you reset any cards that are turned sideways that were, had activated abilities so that they're all reset and ready for the next round. And then you're ready to go back to the beginning of the next epoch, which is the awakening phase. During the awakening phase, as I mentioned earlier, you take away any cards, clear out any cards that were in the Agora before, so all of these cards would be discarded. They'd be set in the discard pile over here. And then, uh, and then if, there was, uh, if there was an Oracle available because the God Apollo was in play, the Oracle cards would move down into the Agora, and then you fill in the Agora so that there's, again, number of players times three plus one. Three cards for each player, plus one additional card that's just going to be a leftover. And that's how the gameplay works. So here we have the basic setup for a two-player game um, with the basic starting cards, the, the five starting families that they suggest, and, uh, and without using any of the Apollo family cards, so we don't have any of the special... Um, the uh, Oracle set up over here. So each player uh, has got a player board. They have their four columns, one of each color. Um, each player starts with four gold. And then uh, we've determined that, that the player uh, Nick is going to be player one. My son over there is going to be player one. So he has the number one disc. I have the number two disc. And the first player gets one victory point. The second player gets two victory points to start with. And so on if you had other, other players. Um, we've got the... Uh, the epoch um, timer here, the round timer here, starting at, at level one. We've got the two quests out here, um, one for each quest, and you'll see that these quests have 
um, a little dot in the upper left corner, um, actually two dots in the upper left corner that shows that this is a quest that you'd use for the two-player game. Um, both those quests are like that. Um, so you'll see that these are the only two quests that you have available, and you've got them set up under each one of these. We've got this set up. Um, it's randomly assigned. There's two different sides to this board. There's one side that has red, blue, green, yellow, and one that has yellow, green, blue, red. So we just randomly chose a side. We've got that set up there. We've got the quest set up under there. We've got the bonus chips here for the five families that we're using, and all, also the three uh, level bonuses are out there as well. And then on this side here, we've got our deck of cards all set up and shuffled. We've got our pool of, of coins, our uh, trigger tokens, and our victory point tokens are over there as well. Um, and so we're all set. This is what we need to play. I've also got these little reference cards out here that show the end of the game scoring. These are very helpful to have out so that you can kind of refer to them to see what you might uh, be scoring at the end of the game, just to kind of give you something to plan for, help you, help you as you plan your strategy. So we've got these out as well. We leave them out to refer to as we play. So there's the setup. And now we're ready to begin the first phase of the game, which is the Agora, and we deal out the cards. So uh, now we're going to go into a gameplay demo and show you the first couple epochs or rounds of the game so you can see how those play through and get a feel for how the game is played. So now we're going to do a gameplay demo. Just uh, play a two-player game, me and my son here. and. Uh, you can kind of see how a round or two goes, or an epoch, as it's called. So we'll just play through as much of it as we can, and uh, just give you a taste of how the gameplay works. So, um, so the first thing we do is we set up the uh, agora, and we do the um, the first stage, the first uh, phase, and that's called the awakening. I always forget the name of that. That's called the awakening. So yeah, so go ahead and deal out so we get. Uh, Number of players times three plus one, right? <laughs> it's kind of kind of funky, but that's it. So we need seven cards. So we usually do kind of spread them out. Maybe put four on that top row over there. And make them a little easier to see. So there's the cards, and we've got a good mix of level one cards, a level two, and some level threes. And these were all shuffled up before we started. We took the five families that we were going to play with and we shuffled them all into one deck, so they're randomized. So, um, so now the Awakening is done, we've got the Agora all set up, and so we're going to start the action phase. So that is where we start uh, drafting, or taking our, our cards and our quests. And Nick is first player. I will take the Father of Gods card, Okay. and I will put... Or use my yellow column. Okay, let's uh, scrunch these up a little bit so that we can tell the difference between our cards and the yeah. cards in the Agora. We're trying to get you a good view of everything here. We want to also be close enough to the board, so hopefully you can see this pretty clearly. All right, so Nick took the Zeus card, and let's see here. I am going to do... I'm going to do this naval power, because that gives you something you can activate every every epoch. So it gives you a goal and a victory point, so that seems like a good one. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to get rid of my red, because I don't think I need that. All right, I will take Tartarus. And I will put my blue column. Okay. Okay, so I get to take something. And let's see. I think I might take another Athena card. So I can get that Athena family started. So I've got green for that. So I met the acquisition um, condition. So I can do that, and now I can burn any one of these. So I will spend my yellow, yellow. Okay, now do you, Nick? Um, well, 
Oh, sorry. And this has a, an immediate effect that happens when I, when I take it. So I receive three gold, so I will go ahead and do that, and then all other players receive one gold. Thank you. Um, I will... So here's what I'm thinking. There's one, I, since I only have red and green left, there's only one card out here that I can take, which is this one. But if I take a card, that leaves me with only one column left, and my dad can take the the quest that I can't succeed, that I is the only one I can succeed at. So yeah. then I have to take an uncompleted quest that's worth very little. Yeah. So I think I'm going to take the... I'm going to use my red column to, or I'll take the first quest and use my red column for it. Okay. So. That's good. That was a good go strategic first. move, because you knew I was going to hose you if you didn't do that. So, I think I'm going to do this, because this seems amazing. So I'm going to take the Oath of Hospitality, another Athena card. And I will get rid of this green. It leaves me with my blue column so I can take the last quest. And that's a really great card. That's a card I can activate every turn. And now I have a 1, a 2, and a 3 in the Athena family. So I can make an Athena legend of uh, a 3 card legend, which is really good. Alright, so I will take this. This well, Poseidon card. Only card you can take. Yep. And my green column. Too. And when you take it, it has an immediate effect, right? Yes, so all other players discard a gold and a victory point. Okay. It's pretty nasty. Okay, and as my last action, I will um, take this quest, put it over here, and I will discard my blue column. Right. And then I am going to... I'm, gonna... I'm not going to use this ability because that's... Uh... That lets me discard a card, and I don't want to do that. But I'm going to use this. So I'm going to turn it sideways to receive a gold and a victory point. So I get the stuff back that I just lost. And then all the other players get to choose one or the other, a gold or a victory mm -hmm. point. I'm going to take a victory point. All right. Okay, so that is the end of the uh, actions phase, and now we are in writing the legends phase. So... Um, this is phase three, so if you have any phase three stuff that only works in phase three, doesn't look like you nope. have any. Um, so the first thing we do is we get paid out for our quests. So, um, or no, the first thing we do is we actually reconcile who is the first player and who's the second player. I so he, he's got the first player quest, so he keeps the first player um, token. And then the, the next thing that happens is we pay out our quests. So... Um, uh, so, whatever your quest is. So he's the first player, so he gets five gold, and two, and then you get two transfers. So we'll use those in a second. And then I get three gold, so I'll just make change here. And I'm going to get three transfers. And that's all of that. And now it's time to transfer cards. So um, the first player, who's got the first player token, gets to um, do the transfers first. So you can transfer right. any number of cards up to two cards. Because and I you can also actions. use actions if you want, right? Yeah. Um, so I will spend one gold to transfer my Tartarus card, which is a one. I will transfer that uh, into a new family. And then I will spend three more to transfer this Poseidon card into another separate family. Okay. Okay. Very good. Anything else? Um, nope, I'm going to leave this one out here. That thing gives you a victory point whenever you take or transfer a Zeus card, right? Yeah, these are Hades and Poseidon. Okay, okay, just looking at what that was. Alright, so this card doesn't do me any more good because it only has a comes into play effect. So I'm going to transfer this guy, and it's going to cost me one gold because it's a level one card. And I'll spend one gold to transfer this guy. And that's all I've got. So I started a new legend with that, and I'm, I, I'm I can't I don't have to decide what legend it is because it's just one card right now. Um, it could be my Athena legend, or it could be my level one legend. It just kind of depends on what other cards come up. All right, so that's the end of the epoch. Um, well, the last phase, I guess. The last phase is the the end of the epoch phase. So we um, so we 
put these back, we put our quests back. It's kind of the reset phase, and we actually don't do that yet, Nick. We do, we do that at the beginning in the awakening phase, and then we reset any cards that we have, um, and then we take our we put our uh, our columns back. And so we are done with the first round of the first epoch, and so let's start the second one. All right. Want to play another one? So yeah, All right. we start the second. So yeah, so second one is we discard anything that was left over in the uh, in the agora, and we draw a new set of cards. Again, uh, number of players times three plus one additional card. There. Stretch those over a little bit. Okay. All right. So you're the first player, so you get first pick again. I do. And I have learned in previous games about a, this card, the gathering. gathering. Those are gathering. So those are great. I yeah. will take one of those, and I will, I will take the. It's the Poseidon one. Okay. And I will take. You need a right. yellow and one other, so you're you're good for that one. Yeah, you I will position. use my. Hmm, let's see, what column should I use? Hmm. I'll use my green column. Hmm. 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 Well, well, well. I think I'm gonna take. This guy. Ah. Yeah. So this could be this could be good. So I'm gonna take this god of fire, which is a Hephaestus. No. Hephaestus. 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 My son is the Greek mythology Shh. expert. No. <laughs> um, and it requires yellow and red, which I have. And I'm going to get rid of my red because there's no more cards out there. There's red, so I'll use that. And that has a. Mm, that's unfortunate. Yeah, that every every Hephaestus card that I take in the future gives me a victory point, so that's really yeah. good. It's the equivalent as this one. Yeah. Because you took that one, um, I will take the Hephaestus card out there. That was me. Use my red for it. I don't like that at all. Well, then that just forces my hand. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna take this Horn of Plenty, which is the. Um, Hades card that gives you a bonus whenever you take or transfer a Hades card mm -hmm. and that requires yellow and green So I will get rid of my yellow column because there's no more yellow cards out there and I'm done hmm. I'll take the n hmm. Yeah, I'll take the number one quest and use my yellow column for that Okay so now I have all kinds of options. So, I guess I'll take this Hades card. Yeah, oh. I'm, gonna yeah. I'm gonna take these Hades cards. So I'll take this guy, it requires a green column, which I have, and um, it has an effect that triggers immediately. It says receive one gold, and then I may transfer one card. So I will transfer this card. So um, a couple things happen at once. So when I take this card, it triggers the Horn of Plenty that has an, 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 an infinite ability or ongoing effect that whenever I take a, a Hades card, I get a gold. So that triggers, and then, then technically this triggers. So I get my gold, and then I get the ability to transfer a card. So I'm going to transfer this guy, and I'm going to start a new legend with that guy. I have to pay one gold to transfer it because you have to pay the cost. And then because I transferred a Hades card, this triggers again and gives me a gold. So that was a good little little interaction there between these two cards. That was good. Okay, so that was my action. Oh, I forgot to discard a column. I have to discard a column, and I'll get rid of that column when I take that card. Sorry All right. about that. I will take this Initiation, which is a Zeus card, and I transfer a Zeus so I receive a victory point. Or you take a, tra a, a Zeus card, right? What? You took it. You didn't I transfer did, yeah, yeah, I transferred. Yeah, I take it, it. Yeah. and then I'll use my blue column for that. Okay. My bad. And I haven't taken a quest yet, so I, ha and I have to take a quest, so um, I'll take this quest, and it requires a blue column, which I have, so I'll use my blue column, and we're done. So now it's the uh, writing the legends phase. Do you want to use any actions before we... No, I can't use well, this because I late. don't have another... Yeah, Eleusis. Eleusis, Eleusis card. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, at the end of my turn, I guess, I will use this so I don't forget. Um, so I'll receive a gold and a victory point, and you can choose to receive one or the other. 
I'll take a gold. All right. And now we're now we're in the writing the legends phase. So we um, make sure we've got the right one of these tokens. I've got the two, so I keep the two, and you keep the one. And then we get paid out for our quest. So I get three gold. I get five. I'm just gonna take singles for now. I'm gonna get some change here. All right. And I'm gonna be able to transfer three, and you're gonna be able to transfer two. So now it goes back to you, and you get to do any transfers that you want to do. All right. I spend one to transfer this gathering to right here. And then I will spend another one to transfer gift of gift of Hephaestus, right here. Wow. And so I receive this. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. The second card you put there, yeah, gives you that. Yeah, the second one. So you have the largest um, level one legend right now. So yes. you get three bonus victory points. That's good. And also, I've got gathering in there. Yeah, that's going to give you bonus points at the end, right? Going all three of those cards give you bonus points me, at the end. They're all Kronos. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, Kronos cards give you that their bonus at the very end of the game, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so you're done with your transfers? Uh, yes, I use both transfers. Use both transfers, okay. All right, I am going to use just one of my transfers. I'm going to leave these cards because they're going to give me bonuses, ongoing bonuses, which, are, which will be helpful. Um, but I am going to transfer this card um, because I want to continue to write my legend. So, um, it's the Oath of Hospitality. It cost me three coins to do that, so I will pay three for that, and I'm going to add that to my Athena legend. No, I don't get that until I have a complete um, oh, that's, family Oh, legend. yeah, the, my... That's fine. So, yeah, so I need one more, I need one more card to complete my Athena legend. I need a level two card. That's the thing I keep forgetting. The cards is for two, and the, the family legends is for a complete one. Right. Okay. Good. All right. Good. Uh, is that it? Yep, that's it. All right. You want to play one more round? So we're going to end right there. That was a couple rounds. We got to see a uh, taste of how the game is played over a couple rounds. And uh, I think you got a really good flavor for the game. If you'd like to see a complete playthrough of the game, I encourage you to check out Dad V Daughter Playthrough. That's Dad V Daughter Playthroughs. Um, that's a channel here on YouTube. There's tons and tons of videos um, of showing you lots of different uh, run-throughs of games. Uh, it's a father-daughter uh, team that produced that channel. Good friend of mine. Um, really well done videos. Gives you a really good flavor of how the game is played so you can see the game in action. Um, he's the guy that supplied me with this game. Um, Asthma Day gave him the game to use uh, to preview the game and uh, he lent it to me so I could do this uh, how to play. So hopefully my video combined with his video will give you a really good sense of the game and will encourage you to go out and, and buy it. So thanks for watching Dwiggy's Demos and I hope you enjoyed Elysium.